Paulo Freire, the Brazilian educator and spokesman for the oppressed, has worked at teaching illiterate people to read and write. But his work as an educator only became successful when he realized the importance of engaging the oppressed in critical discussions of their day-to-day -day problems. In group discussions, the students not only learned how to read and write, but also became conscious of their own situation. By talking with one another, they realized that change is possible. By becoming conscious of their own experiences, they could begin to free themselves from oppression and take the first steps towards liberation. Returning from a crash course, young literacy teachers, the sons and daughters of members of the agricultural cooperative Sebastian Barranca, come to meet the chairman of the cooperative. We are in Santiago, near Ica, approximately 300 kilometers south of Lima in Peru. They call the chairman Don Lolo. Don, the old form of address for the master of the serfs, is still indelibly imprinted on their minds. They report to Don Lolo that they are preparing to teach the remaining 70 illiterate among the 250 members of the co-op how to read and write within the next few months. But before beginning work, they have to ask the members about their most pressing problems in order to learn something about their living conditions. Then they intend to find the key words with which they can communicate with members directly. By discovering their interests in this way, the prospective teachers will also be able to make learning to read and write enjoyable. Hace 10 años, los fundos estaban en manos de los terratenientes a quien se le llamaba patrones. We used to have just large estates here which belonged to the landowners or patrones. They used to treat us, the landless laborers, almost like slaves. After the Peruvian Revolution, the military government introduced land reform. The land was expropriated and given to the peasants. Don Lolo tells them that by asking the workers in Santiago about their greatest worries, they will recognize one of the biggest problems, the living conditions inherited from days of the Patron. The cooperative has no money for building new houses, and the state cannot or will not invest in this area. Only two or three houses can be built in a year. Don't the workers have any initiative or interest in solving their housing problems? Do they expect everything to come from their leader just as they used to expect everything from the landowner? Unfortunately, they expect to be given ready-made houses. Until now, there has been hardly a sign of their own initiative. Two teachers, Pacha and Lucho, try to find out how things really are. Their first question is, which problem here concerns you most? We need a house in which we can live properly. What about this house? The one where we are living is old and almost falling to pieces. You want a new house then? Yes. And who is supposed to give you the house? The president we work for, of course. Our house is much too small. We are completely cramped in our house. We don't even have electricity. We need proper living quarters. There's not enough space. We are a big family. How many children do you have? I have seven children. I intend to demand a better house from the cooperative. 
The president must give it to us because we work for him. Most of them still expect the president to give them a house just like they used to expect it from the patron. But now they are members of the cooperative and therefore part owners of the land, says Lucho. They should be more active in getting decent houses as soon as possible, Pacha says. She had hoped that the mentality of the workers would change with the land reform. But that hasn't happened yet. My special problem is that I can't go out to work anymore. I have a three-month-old child. Sometimes I left the child alone and he got ill. So I can't go to work anymore until they give us the day kindergartens they have promised us. I want to work and I need to work. I'm an unmarried mother and have four children. I can only feed my children if I can work. We don't have electricity. Haven't you ever had electric lights? Oh yes, when we used to work for the patron. Now we don't have electricity anymore. We should work together much more intensely in the cooperative, but we are too badly educated. We could never check up on our leader. We don't understand the laws of the government. We have to learn much more. Pacha and Lucho feel that the inequality between the members of the cooperative and the migrant workers who come from the Sierra for the cotton harvest is a fundamental problem. They want to know to what extent the migrant workers are at a disadvantage. Are there really any differences? The co-op members have, after all, many more rights. They can get cheap food from the cooperative, and they have social security and holidays. We have none of that. But when we used to work for the patron, he used to drive us much harder. Now it's a bit better. There is better atmosphere. I earn a bit more than before, and my wife can also work with me. During the cotton harvest, the members get a fixed daily wage, but we're paid according to the weight of the cotton we have picked. We have to work until evening to earn as much as the members who finish at midday. The truck in which the literacy teachers arrive carries the words, the educational reform is in progress. And on the blackboard is written, the first phase of literacy is getting to know reality. The central problem, Pocha says, are the living conditions. Many live in huts, most with large numbers of children, and there is no sanitation. Further problems, lack of working organization, transport, and insufficient medical care. If these are the main problems, then a discussion of them must be the basis of our work in teaching literacy. Now we have to find the key words for our lessons, the words which best express the main problems of the area. I suggest pala, the spade. That is the tool the workers use most. Other words could be... Lima, Paña, 
It won't do just to enumerate words. For every suggestion, there must be a reason. Bien. Casa. Casa, the house. That is a vital necessity, and living conditions are particularly bad here. That's good. If we talk about that, everyone will be interested and have something to say. The fourth word should be basa, because the basis of our cooperative is supposed to take all the decisions. Another suggestion, the word panna, a cotton harvest. Many people are involved in this, including the migrant workers, and the differences between both groups are a constant source of conflict. Having agreed on these words, we should make some illustrations which express their meaning. Who wants to do the picture for Casa? And I'll do the one for Pana. And what about Basa? I'll do that. Good. Then we should have our working material ready by next week. I'm glad that we have found the words we can work with by relating them to the problems of our members. Pala, Lima, Casa, Base, Ipaña. Norberto was writing on the board. Third phase. After designing the program, the actual work of teaching literacy begins. The everyday reality and the problems of the people of Santiago have determined the subjects to be taught. These subjects are symbolized by words and pictures. By group discussion and dialogue, these images are to be interpreted. Participation in the groups is voluntary, but the members have agreed that whoever comes late or stays away must reckon with a reduction in wages which goes into the group's bank account. Today they are beginning with a new word. Can you tell me please what you see in this picture? A spade. Yes, a spade. What can you do with a spade? Use it for cotton. Digging sand. Scraping out the potatoes. Turning over the earth around the cotton shrubs. With a spade you can make ditches to irrigate the plants, the potatoes and also the cotton. Also to manure the cotton. Well, all these things you can do with a spade. A spade is for digging. And now I'll write the word for spade, pala, on the board. Let's all read it. And now everyone try and write the word pala on your exercise books just as you see it here. Really draw it, copy it, several times.
they have divided the word into syllables. Pa, la, pa, la. Please repeat it, Astusena. La, la, le, le, li, lo, lo, lu, lo. A ver, Agrippino, ven por acá. And now you, Agrippino, come up to the board and read it out. La, la, le, le, li, li, lu, lo, lo, lu, lu. Now we'll try to make new words from the syllables. Who can think of a new word? Loma. Loma. Lola. Lola. Papi. Papi. Mala. Mala. Mapa. Polo. Lalo. Lalo. Tela. Tela. Mami. Good. Now come to the board and try to write it down. Tiene que sacar la moto, por favor. ¿Está bien? Dime. After about two weeks, the group starts to discuss the picture casa. They talk about houses and living in them. Why is this such a nice house, Martinez? Because it's new. And because it's built at the foot of a large mountain and near a big tree. Why do you think the house is so nice? Because it's a fine house. None of us have ever seen such a house. And it's a new house. Is it new? Of course. <coughs> we want to live in houses like this. The cooperative should build us some. But our wages are not enough to get houses like this. Houses like this are what we want, and we can get them if we are unified and work together. If we can't do this, we'll never have such fine houses. We'll never get such a fine house because we leave everything up to the cooperative, which will therefore never build us anything. I think that if we knew how we could contribute, and if we really wanted to, then Don Lolo would have to do the rest, and he'd be able to do it better. But we don't build such houses ourselves, because even if we did, the cooperative wouldn't let us live in them for the rest of our lives. When we turn 60 and get pensioned off, they'll take the houses away from us. When we build ourselves a house, they shouldn't be able to take it away from us. It belongs to us. This is only right. But you'll see that they will take it away from us, because we aren't allowed to work after we are 60. Our house will belong to us and our children. As long as we live, we have a right to live in our house. About 14 days later, the cotton harvest begins, and now they begin to discuss the picture symbolizing the word panna. The people I see in the picture are picking cotton. 
the sacks are being bound up. Others are carrying away the branches. Many are carrying their sacks to the foot of the mountain where the cotton is sorted. Do you have to work hard? Yes, the cotton harvest is heavy work. In the fields, we can only take occasional bites while we are picking the cotton. The harvest lasts four months. Juana and Lucho are harvesting cotton. The cotton harvest is hard work. Do you all have the same work to do, or are there differences between your work and that of the migrant workers? During the cotton harvest, everyone does the same work. It's the same for everyone. For the harvest, everyone's equal. Do the members and migrant workers work for the same length of time? They work for the same length of time, with the only difference that the members are paid on a day basis, and not according to the weight of the cotton they've picked. In the cotton harvest, we all do the same work. Report on the cotton harvest. The foreman organizes the migrant workers into rows. The members may work in groups. At the next session, Lucho asks what work was like under the patron. The patron didn't give us tools. The patron kept us like slaves. It was really lousy working for the patron. I had to go to the harvest with my kids strapped on my back. We never had any holidays. We never had anything at all. If we didn't get through our work quota, the patron would refuse to pay us for the day. The land reform has changed a lot for you, and what has it done for the migrant workers? Nothing has really changed for the migrant workers. The migrant workers are still being exploited. For us members, though, a lot has changed. Do you think it is fair that the migrant workers continue to be exploited? It's not right. The migrant workers are being exploited now just as much as we were before. Now they are our slaves. I think that we not only have to educate the migrant workers, but that we must also build more irrigation in order to extend the cultivated land so there is enough work for everyone, including migrant workers. The migrant workers must also become members of the cooperative. I think we can abolish this inequality. I suggest that we talk about it at the next meeting of the cooperative. We have to find solutions. Sebastian Barranca co-op meets once a month. The meetings are the key to the organization in that all decisions are made there. 
it is compulsory to attend. Don Lolo has a full agenda today. Among other things, our literacy group has proposed a discussion on the problems of the migrant workers. I am all for educating the migrant workers. They should not only help us with the harvest, they should belong to the cooperative. I am against educating the migrant workers. Many members' wives are still without work. We members would be worse off if we also had to give the migrant workers full-time work. It won't do to employ the migrant workers when we need them, and then to throw them out as soon as we can cope on our own. We must either employ them on a permanent basis, or do without them. Now to the fourth point of the agenda. You want more houses to be built, and many of you want to help with the building. We should all do the same amount of work. It is not right that some work in their free time and others sit around doing nothing, Mr. President. We still don't know how to work properly together, Mr. President. It will only work if everyone agrees to cooperate in building the houses. Our cooperative doesn't have any money at the moment to pay construction workers. What do you think, comrades? I object. I think I ought to get my new house already finished. I have enough to do, also at home. I have no time to help with the work, and I don't want to anyway. Mrs. Imra Munoz says that she has no time to help. She demands a finished new house from the cooperative. We must all work in our free time. Then the cooperative will be able to get a lot of houses finished quickly. If the cooperative has no money and we don't do anything ourselves, then we won't have any new houses at all. It's also up to us women to help, for instance, in carrying water and bringing lunch. If the cooperative gives us building materials, a lot of houses could really be finished soon so that we can live decently at last. But everyone has to cooperate, not just a few. Knowledge and insights which have arisen during the group discussion can no longer be ignored. Insights which have changed the consciousness of the members of the CAP Sebastian Barranca and Santiago Neiga will remain alive in them and compel them to negotiate to take action and to change their lives and community for the better. The knowledge of their situation and possibilities for change are already putting them on the path to liberation. <laughs>